If the blessed children were removed to London, it would have been to the parish of St. Martin in the Fields, where the family once lived. The parish records are held at the City of Westminster archives. Hello, Alison and Brian Blessed. Nice to meet you. And lovely to meet you. Yes, I'm on a quest to find these four orphan children, but I think you might be able to give me some information. Yes, our volunteers have done some indexes of the poor law records. We could have a look at those. Would you like to see them? Excellent. OK, yes. let's go over here. <laughs> Thank you. Well, here are the St Martin in the Field settlement examinations. Now, do you know when the family might have come to London? Oh, yes, in, uh, about 1822. Oh, right. This should be this one here. Let's have a look at it. And so we'd be looking for... Blessed, so, blessed. Yes, right. Yeah, uh, Let me yeah. just have a look. Yeah, it's a strange name, isn't it? See, yes. we'll just scroll yeah. down there and... Oh, yes. There it is, blessed, look. Yes. 1822. You've got yes. it, you've got it. What's that mean there? What's oh, that? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. It says, you... children removed from Portsea... That's it. ..on the 11th of November. Now, F.A. father rented in Bull in Court. No, that, that makes sense. A bull in court. That's where the father, uh, Barnabas Blessed, used to live. And he was a bookbinder and a stationer. Oh, so, of course, they've sent them back to that parish. Yes. Look at this. Now, 11th of November, that's when they came over, isn't it? Yes. Yes, yes, but, yes. but extraordinarily, I mean, that, their father died on the 8th of November. Oh. And that means... Three days later, they're yes. coming to London after their father's death. Yes, yes. Astonishing. Mm. They were yes, really yes. in a hurry to get rid of them, weren't they? I think they? they were, yes. I think it's all about money. Yes. By and large, yes, it is. <laughs> yes. My goodness. That's a right. picture, isn't it? Yes. Oh. Where do we go from here? Well, we've got the uh, day books for St Martin in the Fields workhouse, so we could have a look at that and see if they were received there and whether they've recorded anything else about them on their arrival. Marvellous. Yes, shall we go and have a look at that? You're a miracle worker, my dear, <laughs> a miracle worker. Wow! Right, oh. yes. Well, this is the day book of the St Martin in the Fields workhouse. Right. Well, we're looking for the 11th of November, 1822, so... Look, if you just support that side, yes. that might be a bit of a way through the book. 10th of November and... Oh, here we are, on well, this side, well. here, we've got, we've got the family up there, can I you? Yes, I can see it, yes, there? I can see it. Yes. My goodness, look at there. We've got Charles Blessed uh, there, and we've got Jabez Blessed, it's, it's, yes. it's six and three quarters Those of ages, age, yes. and Martha, look, 14 years of age. Oh, it's, all, it's all here. Yes. And look at this, uh, Elizabeth Blessed, who is... Uh, barely two years old. Yes, yes. 22 I, months. Yes. 22 months. Yes. Wow, what a find. Yes, indeed. So they're obviously admitted into the St Martin's workhouse on that day. It looks as if the, the children were split up, actually, because it tells you what ward they were put in, and we can see the two boys seem to have been kept together. They're in BS boys' school, then Martha is put into Ward 10, and Elizabeth, the baby, is put into Ward 8. Oh, dear, dear. Right. It's mm. sad, isn't it? It is it's, a sad story, It's really yes. sad, but they're yes. surviving. Yes. Split yes, up, but are. surviving. Split up, yes. But the two Charles boys are together. Yes. That's, that's a positive thing, yes, yes. Yes, it is. Look at this. It says, Martha Blessed, 14 years of age. What's that? What's that say? What's that? Say? What's that? Well, that says an idiot. An idiot. Martha is described as an idiot. I mean, idiot, that's an extraordinary word to use. What does it mean? What does it mean? Well, I think that was the word they used to describe what we would now call learning difficulties. Right. Um, of special educational needs. Right. Yes, and that was the uh, overseer's shorthand for that. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's terribly sad, isn't it? It is a sad Poor story, Martha. yes. I, mean, I, I got the impression that Martha, being 14 years of age, would be in charge of the family and be responsible for the family, you know, but it seems actually the reverse. It, it looks as if mm. she couldn't, and uh, it's probably up to Charles, of eight and a half. It was his responsibility to look he after... Probably like looking it. after Martha as well. Yes, I think so.
In 1822, the workhouse was just off Trafalgar Square, opposite the parish church of St. Martin in the Fields. For the blessed children, being admitted would have been a daunting experience. It was one of the biggest workhouses in the country, with over 800 inmates. The central courtyard was a graveyard packed full of the workhouse dead. Little attempt was made to keep families together, with all inmates segregated by age and gender. Children lived a highly regimented life. They were given a basic education and instructed in a trade. They rarely, if ever, left the building, except to go to church on Sundays. Brian has come to St. Martin in the Fields Church to meet Professor David Green, who has more information about what happened to the blessed children after they arrived at the workhouse. I've got a record to show you. What? Very sadly, it's a burial register. Oh, no, it. where's that? Where's that? Where's it? From 1822. Where? Oh, there. Oh, no. Oh, Martha. Martha. Gosh. But I mean, what, she died November the 19th. I mean, th they came here on the 11th. That's correct. I mean, she died eight days later, 14 and a half years of age. Oh, how sad. I mean, obviously the journey killed her. She may have been sick yeah. when she arrived. I mean, her parents had died and they were removed uh, very quickly to St. Martin in the Fields. Within so, three days of the, of the father dying. Poor Martha. But there, there were four of them. How, how were the others? I mean, was there any danger that they could be ill as well? Or? Well, there certainly was. On the following day, on the 20th, a day after Martha was buried, there were two blessed children baptised here in this very church, Jabez and Elizabeth. The baby and, and, and the, the six-year-old. That's right. The speed with which they were baptised suggests that they may well have been ill, and we've got a little bit more evidence that that was actually, sadly, the case. Oh, no, no, David. So, There's not going to be anybody left. This is the next page <laughs> of that very same burial register. Where? I don't know. Little Elizabeth, December the 3rd. That's right. <clears throat> Age two years of age. Oh, oh, poor little mite. What kind of a life? Come, was born in Portsmouth and comes over on a cart and. Uh, That's right. And then you know probably didn't know where the hell she was, little baby, and screaming and God knows what. And, That's right. And then she dies. I mean, that's incredibly she cruel. Died. So the two brothers had, had, in a short space of time, had lost their parents and lost their sisters. I mean, I mean, how did they take that on board? I mean, eight years of age and six. I mean, what uh, terrible losses. I've never come across anything like that in my life. Awful. Mm. Well, at least uh, Jabez and Charles had each other, but I mean, what happened to them next? Well, within a week, Jabez was sent off to the infant poorhouse at Highwood Hill, which is to the north of London. He was sent there? That's right, with people he didn't know. Charles remained in the workhouse, mm. but Jabez was moved out. What kind of traumatic effect did yes. that have on him? Yes. Charles being eight and Jabez being six, incredibly young, isn't it? I mean, uh, they'd have clung on to each other yeah. and suddenly Jabez was taken out there. Yes. Lost his parents, lost his sisters, and now he's separated from his brother. It was common practice to send pauper children out of London to infant poorhouses in the countryside, where the cleaner air and water improved their chances of survival. Jabez Blessed spent three years away. Then, at the age of nine, he was returned to the workhouse. 
But the previous year, his brother Charles had been apprenticed in South London. It says here that Charles Blessing, aged 11 years, is going to be a shoemaker. So does that mean that when Jabez came back, his brother had gone on this apprenticeship out, out, out of the workhouse? It does. Jabez comes back, back to the workhouse, and, and all of a sudden his brother isn't there His anymore. brother isn't there. He'd be looking forward to seeing his brother, and he's not there. That's right. Oh, dear. So they're isolated from each other, which is it's a great shame. So they'd have to be resolute on their own, wouldn't they? They're, you know, and, and facing life on their own. Yes. Jabez was now the sole remaining blessed child in the workhouse. For two years, the records make no further mention of him. Then, in 1827, when he was 11, he reappears. So there's Jabez, blessed, yes. What is uh, 29th of July, 1827? That's correct. It says, run away when at church with the other boys. That's right. My God! He done He's, a runner. He done a runner. He looks to me like he came to church, did his prayers. Oh, very good. In between that and here, boing, he's gone. That's right. Well, he must have been absolutely sure of himself. He must have had a plan. I mean, he, he, he knew the area around London, would he? I don't know. But, I mean, he's, he's 11 yeah. and, and smart. And resolute and crafty. Yeah. He pressed. Bloody good going. He sounds a character, even at that age. He does. He? he does. 